a um, lot of dispute over what a Neanderthal is. And in fact, we talked a little bit about Neanderthals in Dallas, uh, which got into uh, some fairly decent controversy because young Earth creations believe that Neanderthal is fully human. Old Earth creationists see Neanderthal as simply a bipedal primate akin to, say, um, orangutans or chimpanzees. Uh, we do not believe that they had a spirit. Um, we do believe that they were capable of using tools. But the interesting thing about Neanderthal is the evidence we have for tool use is barely that above what a chimpanzee is capable of doing. Um, and I think what, this, what got things a bit confused is Neanderthals overlap human beings by about 10,000 years. And Neanderthals, like chimpanzees, steal human tools and use them. And so people presume that these Neanderthals are much more advanced in their tool capability than they really were. Uh, but if you look at what the Neanderthals were doing before human beings showed up, or in those regions where human beings had not yet uh, settled, uh, their tool use is, well, the most advanced you ever get is a Neanderthal taking a boulder and smashing that rock against another rock, getting a bunch of flakes, and using the flakes to scrape the flesh off bones. That's the most advanced tool use you see. Whereas when human beings show up on the scene, you immediately see sophisticated tools, shovels and axes and hammers. Uh, you see needles for sewing uh, cloth together. Uh, pardon me? And jewelry, yeah. Neanderthals had no clothing, no jewelry. Okay. Now, this is something we document carefully in Who is Adam? There was a time when anthropologists presumed that they were burying their dead. And the evidence for that is they find a Neanderthal skeleton within 30 feet of some flower pollen. And so they're presuming that this flower pollen was something that was placed over the body and was part of a burial rite. While it's possible, it could be that they were uh, using these things for food, or it could be that the pollen is there simply by chance, not by design on the part of the Neanderthals. There's also no evidence that Neanderthals ever built any housing. Uh, we do see evidence that they took advantage of caves. Well, there's been a revolution in this in the last 10 years. I mean, what you're describing is a story that scientists had of Neanderthal a decade ago, which was that Neanderthals uh, were like us, and it's true. They were tall. Uh, they were completely bipedal. They could walk as easily as we could walk, um, almost as easily. And, uh, you know, they had brains the same size as ours. Um, our brain is no bigger than a Neanderthal brain. Um, and they were well adapted for cold weather. And the presumption was that Neanderthals simply intermarried and interbred with modern humans, and that many of us in this room today uh, have Neanderthal of blood within them. Uh, some of you wives might think your husbands have Neanderthal characteristics, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's all been completely overthrown. And the reason, primary reason that has now been uh, tossed away uh, is because of DNA evidence. Uh, the DNA evidence tells us definitively both Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA uh, that there is no biological link whatsoever between humans and Neanderthals and that Neanderthals went extinct rapidly shortly after the appearance of uh, human beings. And we now know they did not wear clothes, they did not build houses. There is some evidence of uh, carbon char near Neanderthal sites. And the presumption there again was that they must have been able to domesticate fire in the same way that early humans did. But the scientific literature is now has a consensus opinion that this was simply chance. At best, the Neanderthals were taking advantage of wildfires. Uh, we don't even have any evidence that they ever cooked their food. Uh, but it's possible they were taking advantage of these wildfires for warmth or whatever. Uh, but most people think, well, it's just like, you know, fires start. And the fact that we see charcoal near uh, a, a skeleton of a Neanderthal shouldn't surprise us anymore that we find charcoal near the site of uh, a skeleton of a deer. Now, I'm just simply saying that uh, the evidence that they had religious services, wore clothes, uh, had advanced tools, and, uh, you know, built homes, 
Uh, that's all gone by the way based on the latest research. In fact, the very latest thing to withstand is that there was a bear cult on the part of the Neanderthals. And you'll see we got several pages on that and who was Adam. Because what they found was that Neanderthal bones are in the same place in a cave with bear bones. And the assumption was that Neanderthals were using the bones of these bears as part of a religious practice. The consensus view now is that the bears displaced the Neanderthals out of the cave. And that, in fact, the bears were eating the Neanderthals rather than the other way around. <laughs> so... Uh, both bears and Neanderthals in a cold climate would uh, want possession of a cave. Now, it could be that the Neanderthals won. I don't know who won the fight, but the whole point is the fact that you find the bones of bears and the bones of Neanderthals in a cave simply means that both of them, at some particular time, were using the cave for habitation. That's also evidence that the Neanderthals were not building elaborate homes because we find them most frequently associated uh, with caves. And their population was always low. And so, but this got us into a discussion in Dallas. Because Neanderthals, like a lot of these uh, non theist anthropologists of 10 years ago, today still interpret Neanderthals as fully human. And not just Neanderthals, I was surprised that they interpret Homo erectus as fully human. Now, Homo erectus, morphologically, is really different from uh, human beings. But they claim that in this room today there would be descendants of the Homo erecti uh, as well as descendants of Neanderthals and that we all interbred, but the DNA evidence is definitive that that, that couldn't have happened. The, the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens I dealt to. By the way, when they say Homo sapiens I dealt to, it's a tropical Neanderthal. So a little bit different body shape because it doesn't have to deal with the cold, uh, but in every other respect uh, has Neanderthal-like uh, features and dates back to the same time as the Neanderthals, namely about uh, you know, 80,000 to 160, 170,000 years ago. Thank you. Um, I had a question about old earth creationism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been reading some Reasons to Believe, Hugh Ross, mm -hmm. and it's very confusing to me, but mm -hmm. it seems like he's saying that there, God created everything, but God created waves. So like mm -hmm. Neanderthals would be non-human, but a, a wave before humans. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could address that. Sure, well, the, uh, the day age idea that I covered earlier, that's what Hugh Ross believes. Uh, I debated him recently. If you, if you take a look at our, the, the podcast that I have, I'm actually analyzing my own debate with, with Hugh Ross, which is kind of interesting. But there were some things I could have said better, and so I thought I might as well, you know, you can learn from my mistakes as well as my successes. So, um, yeah, so he's, he believes in the day age, and that's refuted by context of Genesis. There's no doubt those are ordinary days. But that causes him to run into some problems because he accepts the secular dating scheme, and so, they, you know, he thinks that Neanderthals were, uh, by the way, Neanderthals are just, they're human beings, you understand that? They're human beings, um, that they, they are, um, an, you might call them an ethnic variety, just like we have different ethnicities today. Uh, there were eth ethnicities in the past, some of which uh, are not around anymore. Neanderthals are one of those. Uh, we know they're people because they, had, they buried their dead. That's a significance of an expectation of resurrection. That's why we bury our dead. So they had religion, they have faith. Animals, animals don't do that. Um, evidence that they had musical instruments, evidence that Neanderthals uh, interbred with what we would call modern homo sapiens, modern humans. So uh, if you look at their skeleton, the skeleton of Neanderthals is the same as ours, basically. They tended to be a little stockier on average, but, you know, there's, there's people today that are a little stockier. That's fine. They tended to have brow ridges that are a little bit elongated, but I've seen people today that have that. Their noses were a little longer than average today. Uh, their cranial capacity was a little bit larger than average for human beings today. So they had bigger brains, interestingly. So th these are human beings. There's no doubt these are human beings that had art and culture and, and probably lived uh, very shortly after the worldwide flood, which is when we think, the, we think there was an ice age that happened after the worldwide flood that lasted a few hundred years. We think that's when the Neanderthals lived. But they were just, they're human beings. Beings. There are, when you take a look in the um, uh, fossil record, you find four very subtle variations on the human skeleton that tell you you're dealing with what we call a modern Homo sapien or archaic Homo sapien, Neanderthal or Cro-Magnon. These are all people, though. Everything else, primates, and we find lots of primates too, but nothing in between. 